السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن شاء الله هذه few minutes we will be discussing the ibadah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the worship of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how did he use to worship before starting that we have to define what is ibadah first al-ibadah ism al-jami' لكل قول وعمل العبادة is a comprehensive word for every statement of the tongue and action of the limbs الذي أمر الله به ورضي عنه of which Allah has commanded and he is pleased with it it is every statement and action statement of the tongue and action of the heart and the limbs of which Allah has commanded and he is pleased with it that is called ibadah that is the what you can call the generic definition of ibadah every statement and action of the heart and the limbs of which Allah has ordered Allah has commanded that is either in his book or through the authentic sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and he is pleased with that that is called ibadah and every ibadah in islam it is not an ibadah worth anything except if it is done upon two conditions the first being al-ikhlas it has to be done sincerely for allah because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he defines to us that this is the reason for him creating us and us being here today that we are existing here today in this snow, um, rainstorm, whatever you want to call it. Uh, today, you're not here to play with the snow. You're not here to eat and sleep and then sleep and eat again. No. And that is for every human being on this planet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونِ I did not create the humans and the genes except for one purpose and that is they do the ibadah to me. They worship me. So every ibadah for it to be worth anything, it has to be done only for Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ And they, the human beings, have not been commanded except for one great purpose. That they worship Allah, making the whole religion sincere only for Him. Everything which is part of the religion has to be mukhlisan lillah, sincerely done for Allah, not to please anyone else. That is the first condition for any and every ibadah to be accepted. So when you do your dhikr, when you make your dua, when you sit to benefit from a lecture, when you pray your salah, when you give your zakah, or you help an orphan, when you talk, with good manners to others, when you treat well your parents, and every other ibadah, it has to be done on this great foundation, this great principle, that it has to be upon ikhlas, for Allah alone. Otherwise, it is worth nothing. It is worth nothing. The second principle of which ibadah has to have for it to be worth anything, that is the mutaba'ah, it has to be done according to the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is one of the great excellencies of why we should love and honor and respect and follow him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Allah sent him as a guide. Allah sent him as the one who clarifies to us how do we get close to Allah. How do we fulfill the purpose of our creation. What is the purpose of our creation? Huh? Al-ibadah. But how are you going to know what is ibadah? Only through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And that is where we're discussing his ibadah. And that is where it is the most important thing for you. If your ibadah is to qualify to be worth anything, it have to be done upon that great principle. You have to follow him. You have to follow him. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ There has been for you in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best example. For who though? For who? For those who really have hope. If you have hope that Allah will reward me with good, if you have hope that Allah will forgive me my sins, if you have hope that Allah will enter me Jannah, then there is no way except for you to follow the best example whom Allah has brought of the human beings, and that is who? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is why this is another proof to show the importance of the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is what we call the, the sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in more than 80 verses of the Quran, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ Establish the prayer. الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ Those who establish the prayer. How? Allah does not tell us how in the Quran. How? It's not mentioned. It's not mentioned. So how do we pray? It's not mentioned. That's why Allah he sent a messenger to clarify to us what he wants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after he mentions salah mostly he follows it up with what? Huh? وَآتُ الزَّكَاءِ And give the zakah. How much? Is it 100% of your income? When? Every week? Of what property? Is there a zakah on your thought which you wear? It's not there in the Quran. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to clarify that. So Allah sent him and he was the best of those who fulfilled and followed Allah's command of what? Worship me alone. And Allah said to us, وَإِن تُطْوِعُوهُ تَهْتَدُوا If you obey him, you'll be guided. That is the way which is the right way. And Allah, he warned, he says, فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهَا أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةٌ أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Let them be warned, those who go against his way, that a fitna will come to them. Imam Ahmad, he said, Rahimahullah, أَتَدْرُونَ مَا الْفِتْنَ He says, you know what the fitna is in this ayah? He says, الْفِتْنَ شِرْكُ بِاللَّهِ لَعَلَّهُ يَرُدَّ قَوْلَ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَلَّمْ ثُمْ يَتْرُكْ دِينَ كُلَّهُ he'll, ref he'll reject one hadith of the Prophet then he'll reject all the deen. Let them be warned, those who oppose his command, that a fitna will come to them. A fitna will come to them. أو تصيبهم عذاب أليم أو يصيبهم عذاب أليم or a punishment which is painful will come to them for not following his way. Because if you don't follow his way, if you don't know his way, then there's no way for you to do what Allah wants you to do. There's no way. There's no other way. As-Sirat al-Mustaqim is one only. One. The nur of Iman and Islam is one. That is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about light, nur, and he speaks about darkness, always in the Quran he says nur is one also, only one. Because there's only one way to Allah. And the dhulumat, the darknesses, darkness in plural, there are so many. All the other false religions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu waliyu alladhina aman yukhrijuhum mina al-dhulumat jamu'un ila nur Only one. Allah is the patron, the guide, the guardian of the believers. He takes him out. He takes them out from what? From darknesses. And he brings them to the light, which is only one. And that is the way of, of his Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ from his salah, from his salah, we start with the salah, because it is uh, the fundamental act of worship which the Muslim has to do every day, five times a day at least. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his guide, uh, his guidance about the salah, he used to say the best salah, the best salah is the one prayed at home, except al-maktuba, except the obligatory prayer. Any other salah, it is best prayed at home, that is for both men and women, except the obligatory salah and only one salah. From the nawafil, that is what? Taraweeh. 
Salat al-Taraweeh, it is better prayed in the masjid, in jama'ah, in Ramadan. But any other nafil salah any other voluntary salah the Prophet in fact, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, uh, praying in congregation, praying in congregation, it is 25 times better than praying individually. Right or wrong? Praying in congregation, it is better than someone praying by himself. 25 times more. 25 times more. And then he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the same hadith, and praying, praying the sunnah, what you call the sunnah prayer, is called the nafil, nafil prayer. At home, is 25 times better than praying it in the masjid. 25 times better than praying it in the masjid. That is why he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, never prayed any nafil salah in the masjid. Never. Except taraweeh and the other salahs which are for an uh, exceptional need. Like the salah of the eclipse. If there's an eclipse. Or salatul istisqa. Seeking for rain. But those are things which are not frequent. It's not a daily thing. But the daily voluntary prayers, you pray at home. That is from the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ. And from his guidance ﷺ, he used to encourage people to have a special place or a special room for salah in the house. If it's, if it's possible to have a special room, this is the place people pray in the house. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La taj'alu buyutakum maqabir. Do not make your houses like the graves. Or sallu fiha, pray in your homes. Don't make your house, uh, it's boarding and breakfast only. Uh, lodging and breakfast only. You sleep, you eat, you go. You sleep, you eat, you go. It becomes like a grave. The house, it is built upon taqwa of Allah. Happiness in the family is about people worshipping Allah in that house. Chasing away the shayateen. That is why when the woman, she came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and she said, Ya Rasulullah, I love to pray with you, Isha. I love to come all the way here in the masjid. What masjid is she talking about? Huh? Masjid al-Nabawi in Medina. Where one salah, is worth how much salahs anywhere else? A thousand salahs. And if you pray one isha there, it's like praying a thousand ishas here or anywhere else other than Baytul Haram in Mecca. How many days will it take you to pray one thousand ishas? That's three years, Akhi. Three years. But yet, he said to her, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, pray in your home, it is better for you, for the women. I finished with the man. The man, Salatul Jama'ah, you pray in the masjid. The Nafila, you pray at home. For the women, everything is at home. That is better. He said to her, not even my masjid. Don't come to my masjid. She said, what? I love to pray with you. He says to her, your salah in the house is better. And your salah in your room, not in the living room, is better than in the living room. So that the houses, they are built upon what? Taq of Allah. The houses are built upon dhikr of Allah. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to pray at night. He used to pray at night. And he used to say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sharaful mu'min, qiyamul layl. The nobility of a believer is to stand up at night and pray. And he used to sleep and he used to pray. He used to sleep a bit of the night, then he would wake up and pray. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when something would bother him, when something major would happen, fazi'a ila salah, he would run, he would rush to go pray to Allah, to show the importance of the salah in the life of a Muslim. And he used to say to Bilal, his mu'adhin, ah, radiyallahu anhu, arihna ya Bilal abis salah, arihna ya Bilal abis salah, give us comfort, give us happiness ya Bilal, call the adhan, call the iqama, let us find happiness, today we find happiness, in things which are evil in fact. Not even just mubah, permissible. And our salah, that's when we're most discomforted. That's when we're most discomforted. If the Imam read, إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَةِ He said, why so long? Why so long? وَلْيَاذًا بِاللَّهِ The shayateen, they took over the hearts. When he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his sahaba, they used to say, well, this is the comfort. He used to say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ 
the coolness of my eyes is in salah. That's when I find peace in the heart. When I'm standing to my Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshipping him, prostrating to him, showing him that, Ya Rabb, I'm fulfilling the command uh, and the purpose of why you created me. Here I am, submitting myself. He used to pray in his house at night. And Aisha radiallahu anha would be sleeping. Uh, and when he makes sujood sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would touch her so that she moves her legs and then he would make sajda. Because his house was small. His house was small. That is his salah. That is his salah. And here, alhamdulillah, we have discussed salah, I think, in uh, a very detailed and broad way. Alhamdulillah. And those who have not been here, then you can refer to the videos or to the DVDs. We had almost 40 lectures just of salah. That was the prayer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And everyone has to know how to pray. Because he sallallahu alayhi wa he said, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray just like you saw me praying. We're coming back to the fact of what? You have to follow him. Allah says in the Quran, establish the prayer. How? You don't know how. I don't know how. You'll only know how through him sallallahu alayhi wa Pray the way you saw me praying. The way his companions, they described him praying. Because we didn't see him. Coming to zakah. Coming to zakah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to encourage people a lot to give. He used to encourage people to give and he used to say to them, give and do not fear a reduction. Give, do not fear reduction. And he used to say, the one who gives Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace it. وَمَا أَنفَقْتُم مِّن شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُهُ وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الرَّازِقِينَ Whatever you give, Allah is going to substitute it, replace it. And He is the best of those who provide. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the best deal you can ever have. The one who gives one, Allah multiplies it by 10 up to 700 times. How? According to how much sincerity you did. How, according to how much sincerity you had. He used to say to the people, Rubba dirhaman, sabaqa mi'ata alf. Maybe one dirham, it will be better in front of Allah than a hundred thousand. They asked, how ya Rasulullah, how? How does one dollar become more than a hundred thousand? He said, because this one he had two dollars only, he had two dirhams. And he gave one. So he gave what? He gave half of his wealth. While the other one is a millionaire, a hundred thousand is nothing for him. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Ibn Abbas used to say, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَجْوَدُ النَّاسِ وَكَانَ أَجْوَدُ مَا يَكُونُ فِي رَمَضَانِ حِينَ يَلْقَاهُ جِبْرِيلِ He used to be, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most generous of all people. And he'll be more generous during Ramadan. Jabir radiallahu anhu, Anas radiallahu anhu, he said, مَا سُئِلَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ شَيْئًا فَمْتَنَ عَقَدْ he was never asked by anyone anything and he refused to give. Only if he didn't have. And in fact, sometimes if he doesn't have, he would borrow just to give those who are poor. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is his part of giving. And all of you know the hadith. Uh, when they had a lamb, when they had a lamb, and he left, when he came back home, he asked Aisha, what is left? Because she gave some meat, she gave some meat, she gave some meat. He asked, what is left? What did she say? Huh? What did she say? The shoulder is left. Because they knew the Prophet ﷺ used to love the shoulder of the lamb. And he ﷺ he said, no. Everything is left except the shoulder. Everything you have given... That is what is remaining for us in front of Allah. Except the shoulder. It is still here. It hasn't been given. And he used to say, Ayyukum, Ayyukum, which of you? Ma'alu warithiya habbu min malihi. Who amongst you? He loves the wealth of those who will inherit from him more than his own wealth. They said, none of us, Ya Rasulullah. He said, then whatever you give, that is your wealth. Whatever you leave behind, that is for them. 
he used to give. He used to give. The Bedouin who came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he held his collar like that. He held his collar like that until they could see the marks on his neck. And he said to him, Ya Muhammad, A'tini, give me, mimma a'taka Allah. Give me what Allah has given you. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam smiled. He said, give him. And they gave him, he said, give him more. He said, give him more. When he went back to his people, he said, Ya Qawm, he said, oh my people, I went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And he gives and he does not fear poverty. And everyone became Muslim. Everyone became Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like Ibn Abbas, he says, كان وكان أجد ما يكون في رمضان أكثر أو أفضل من ريح مرسلة he brings more blessings and benefits than the wind which brings rain. As for his siyam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as for his fasting, he used to fast every Monday and Thursday. He used to fast every Monday and Thursday. And he would say when they asked him, as in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari, why do you fast every Monday, Ya Rasulullah? He said, this was the day I was born. So I'm fasting every Monday. Every Monday of the week, not on your birthday. Uh, you want to pop balloons and, and, and blow out candles like the Jews or the below on your birthday. The Muslim, sad, very sad, our state. Very sad. Very sad. Wallahi. He used to remind himself of the day he was born by doing what? Getting close to Allah, the purpose of why you are here. The point I'm making here today is this. Every moment of his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to do things which will remind him and others, those who saw him and us who are studying him, that we are here for the greater purpose. We're here to worship Allah. Everything else is secondary. Secondary. There's the primary, greatest goal. That is to worship Allah. So you take advantage of every moment of your life. And he used to fast every Thursday also. And when they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, why do you fast Thursday? What did he say? Who knows? Who knows? That is the day, uh, the weekly actions, the weekly actions you did, salah, dhikr, dua, that is the day they are taken to Allah every Thursday. He says, so I love that my actions are taken up to Allah while I'm fasting. Because fasting is one of the greatest acts of worship you can do. That is why there's a special door in Jannah, Babu Rayyan. Only for those who fast, people who used to fast continuously, and that is, used to be their habit. Only for them. Once they are told, enter, everyone else is told, no, this is only for them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as in the hadith Qudsi, Kullu amal ibn Adam lahu, kullu amal ibn Adam lahu, illa sawm fa innahu li wa ana ujzi bi. He says, every action of the son of Adam is for him. Meaning, you know the reward. Al hasratu bi ashri amthaliha ila sabi'amiyatun di'fin. Every action, it is multiplied by 10 up to 700. Except fasting, Allah says, that is for me. And I am the one who knows the reward I'm going to give. Look at the obesity Muslims are, fa are, are suffering from today. If we follow the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have to know something. Islam came to rectify our religious, our connection to Allah, and also our worldly affairs. And also our worldly affairs. He used to fast every Monday and Thursday. And he commanded us and encouraged us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to fast every three days of the month. Every three days, at least three days of the month, if you're not fasting every Monday and Thursday. Like in the hadith of Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, in Sahih Muslim, when he said, Awsani Khalili bi thalath. My close friend and beloved friend, he advised me to three things. Number one, Allah anamu illa uh, an utir. That I should not sleep except after praying, after, except making sure first I prayed witr. If you know you're not going to wake up at night to pray night prayer, pray your witr before sleeping. And the second thing he said, what? And he advised me that I should fast every month three days. And he used to fast the day of Ashura, that's the 10th of Muharram. And he used to fast the day of Arafah if he was not in Hajj. 
Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged us. As for his Hajj, coming to his Hajj and his Umrah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he only did one Hajj. And that is the ninth year. Uh, a few months before he passed away. And he told the people, he told the people, I'm bringing you to that great principle, no ibadah, which is the purpose of creation, will be accepted, except if it is done through the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was the first Hajj which he did and the only one. So he told the people what? Well, ta'khudhu minni manasikakum. Make sure all of you take from me the rights of Hajj. Watch me what I'm doing. What do we do at Muzdalifa? When do we stand at Arafah? Where do we go at Mina? When? When are we doing the Tawaful Ifada? When do we do the Rami? Watch me. Well, ta'khudhu minni manasikakum. You take the way you worship from me because Allah sent him only. And anyone else Anyone, anyone means everyone, ya ikhwan, who contradicts his way, whether intentionally or unintentionally, we say, no, this is not the way of the Prophet Sallallahu He is the Imam Al-A'zam. Imam Al-A'zam is him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not anyone else. The greatest Imam is him. He is the only ma'asum, like you just had, the only one who is infallible. He is the only one which Allah, who Allah said to us, follow him. You understand? That used to be his hajj. And he did his hajj. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is reported step by step in detail. And the best hadith is the hadith of Jabir. Where he explained every detail of the hajj of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As for his dhikr. As for his dhikr. Aisha radiallahu anha. She says in Sahih al-Bukhari. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yadhkuru Allah fi kulli halihi. He used to remember Allah in every state of his, every state, whether he's sleeping, whether he's standing, whether he is with his family, every time he remembers Allah, he does dhikr. And dhikr is of two types. To remember Allah so that you do the right things you're supposed to do and to stop from doing the evil things. And to remember Allah in your heart and to glorify him and to praise him with your heart and your tongue. And there's different ways of doing that. Subhanallah and alhamdulillah and uh, la ilaha illallah and Allahu Akbar. And those are the greatest dhikr, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ahabbu al-kalam ilallahi arba'un. The best, the most beloved words to Allah are for. Subhanallah and alhamdulillah and la ilaha illallah and Allahu Akbar. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. He narrates, because this is part of dhikr, is istighfar and tawbah. Istighfar and Tawbah. He says, Kunna na'uddu li Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi majlisin wahid sab'ina istighfar. No, fi riwaya mi'at istighfar. When we used to sit with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one sitting, we were sitting with him, we used to count that he says, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi more than 70 or 100 times. Not in one day, in one sitting. He says, I seek Allah's forgiveness and I repent to him more than 70 or 100 times. Exemplifying uh, the command of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talked about his great slaves. They remember Allah always, whether they are standing, walking, running, whether they are sitting, whether they are lying down. He used to do dhikr all the time. And dhikr is the greatest ibadah. A dhikr is the greatest ibadah. And the dhikr which benefits though is the dhikr which comes from the heart. The dhikr which comes from the heart. Not someone is doing dhikr uh, and his heart is not there. It is supposed to be glorification of Allah in the heart. As for his dua, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as for his dua, then how many du'as have been, have been, have been uh, 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 narrated from him? Uh, take an estimate, approximate, guesstimate. How many du'as? We had the book of du'a here. Uh, every time. You used to do dhikr every time. All of you have the small book, Hisnul Muslim. If you don't have it, you can put it on your phone. How many adhkar are there? There's an adhkar for we could say approximately every movement of your life, right or wrong, when you wear your shoe, 
when you wear your cloth, when you step out of home, if you're going to the masjid, huh? when you climb on your riding animal, when you meet someone, when you go to a new place, when you enter the masjid, when you make wudu, when you go into the washroom, when you leave the washroom, when you start to pray, after you pray, when you go back home, before you enjoy with your wife, after you eat, before you eat, every time is a time of dhikr. Wala dhikrullahi akbar. The dhikr of Allah is the greatest ibad. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How did we know all of this? How did we know all of this adhkar which I just mentioned? Should I start again? When you wake up, when you leave your house, when you put on your cloth, when you put on your shoe, or if you're going to the masjid, should I go ahead? Go ahead. Who taught us all of this? Where did we get this? Where did we get this? Through him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he taught them practical and he used to say to them, do this, say this, say this, when you, so that you're connected to Allah. This is what the Muslim is supposed to follow of his Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the sunnah. The sunnah is not just a claim you make. The sunnah is not just a claim because how many people can claim? Everyone can claim that they are the guided ones. But those who follow him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his sahaba, practically, from the time you wake up to the time you go back to sleep, ask yourself, out of 100%, how much was it done according to how the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lived? The simplest things, then you know, do you love him or not? Then you know, do you worship Allah or not? As he used to do. Finishing off. The way he dealt with people, that is ibadahs. His mu'amal, his akhlaq, his akhlaq. And I don't think that needs any introduction. But the Muslim, he acts like that because it is ibadah. The Muslim, he speaks what is good because it is ibadah. The Muslim, he stops from harming people because it is ibadah. The Muslim, he smiles at his fellow Muslim because it is ibadah. The Muslim, he does good to everyone, Muslim or non-Muslim, because it is ibadah. The Muslim is courteous, the Muslim is punctual, the Muslim is trustworthy, the Muslim is truthful. Because of what? It is ibadah. That is how he was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that is what we are supposed to be. If, if we really have hope that Allah will enter us into Jannah and save us from the hellfire, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all of that in our parents and our children. But there's no way Except studying him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and following his way. This is briefly, this is very briefly his ibadah. And as you see, there's not a moment of life which he did not occupy himself with ibadah. Even if it's not actually, you know, there's the two types of ibadah. The individual ibadah, where you have to be engaged yourself, just you and Allah. And then there's the communal ibadah. Helping people. When he was asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who is the most beloved person to Allah? Habbu nas Allah. Who is the most beloved person to Allah? He said, Anfa'uhum lin nas. Anfa'uhum lin nas. The one who is most beneficial to other human beings. The one who is the most helpful to other human beings. That's the one Allah loves most. In whatever way you'll help them. And that is why he said what? When he was asked right after that, what is the best action I can do? He said, Sururun, Tudkhiluhu fi akhik or fi Muslim, making another Muslim happy. Aw tadu anhu al or if he's hungry, you feed him. Aw taqdi anhu daynahu, or if he's a debt, you paid for him. Aw tarfa ilayhi mata'ahu, or if he's just on his horse or his camel. And he left his luggage there, just raising up for him. That is ibadah. And then he said, what? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I finish off with this. وَلِأَنْ أَمْشِي مَعَ أَخِي لِأَقْضِيَ حَاجَتَهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ أَنْ أَعْتَكِفَ فِي مَسْجِدِ هَذَا شَهْرًا And that I go with my Muslim brother to help him in fulfilling his need. I'm just helping him to do whatever he has to do. That I go help him. That is more beloved to me because the ajr is greater, the reward is greater than what? He says, it is more beloved to me than me doing i'tikaf one whole month in my masjid. His masjid, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ 
واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا There has been in the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the best example in everything in everything and especially how you connect to Allah like we just mentioned and one ibadah which today most of us we overlook that is the ibadah of having time by yourself secluding yourself and judging yourself al muhasaba having time for yourself only nobody with you and judging yourself and where am i how is my relation with allah letting the eyes that shed tears that is one thing which we today are missing أقول ما تسمعون أستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا وأسك الله سبحانه وتعالى to make us from those who follow his prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in every single aspect and we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to accept all of our actions and we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to make us close to him in the firdaus al-a'la and our parents and our offsprings سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك